Hello, welcome back to Art of Awakening. 2020 was supposed to be this year of great vision, but it's really turned into kind of an, a shit show, right? Um, <laughs> distractions right and left. And even as, I, as I'm recording this video, there's dogs yapping in the neighbor's dogs. There is a, <laughs> a circular saw or something going on in the background. There is distractions around us, but it's not too late to take back that 2020 vision. And this indeed is what I believe lightworkers are really being called to do right now, is to see past those distractions and really step forward as the divine creators we were meant to be. So uh, my name is Ona. If you haven't met me before, please join me. We're going to discuss this in this video, as well as I want to introduce to you uh, <laughs> one of the new little pets that we got. And also, I have an upcoming event that I okay, want to Okay, so we are at this huge, huge tipping point, as we all know, <laughs> in humanity, where we're shifting from this old kind of matrix, uh, 3D matrix mentality into a new... Um, a new reality and it's actually a process that involves a lot a lot of chaos and we're all feeling it right now um so i just want to speak to that because we're actually more powerful than most of us believe than any of us really knows okay and so this is really the time to to step forward and to start stepping into our role as as creators as creator beings human beings um, I mean, I work a lot with spirit animals. Every spirit animal has their superpower. One of the immense, incredible superpowers of, of the human being is the creator, right? We are divine creators. We're meant to be that. And, and so this is really just a, it's a test, right? A test of our, our integrity as human beings, right? As a human species to step into that creator, creator role in a way that's beautiful and harmonious and aligned with nature, okay? So right now you've probably been feeling we've got these two energies going on. We've got this ascending spiral, right? Um, the whole ascension thing and, uh, and moving the planet up into this um, kind of 5D more flow sort of existence, one that's a lot more, you know, aligned where miracles do happen, right? And they really do. But we're also coming out of this descending spiral of, you know, more and more attention, anxiety, you know, destruction, um, you know, just all the stuff that, that has plagued humanity for thousands and thousands of years. Um, you know, so you're going to feel that, you know, there are certain aspects of, of being on earth right now that are very life enhancing and within yourself as well. And there are certain things that are life degrading. Okay. And so 2020 is this pivotal, pivotal year. Okay. And we're, you know, everybody's used to going into 2020. We're all talking about, oh, the year of vision, right? All this stuff happened and it's really taken our vision off of where we want to be and into, you know, disaster scenarios, into chaos, into conflict, okay? And there's a reason for that is because, you know, the, the, the forces that are wanting to take us down aren't going to go without a fight. And one of their biggest, one of their biggest ways to fight is to distract us from our focus on what you know the beautiful things that we want to create because what you focus on that is what you will create okay and we're going to be creating all the time we can't help it we're creator beings right and so if they can get our focus onto something that is on that descending spiral it's going to pull our energy down into that spiral and guess what that's what we're going to be creating okay and so the big big challenge right now as light workers as human beings is to maintain that focus on a better world okay that's what we're here for 
is to create this better world is to and, and we're going to see this better world rising out of the ashes okay so there's going to be stuff falling down dissolving all around us okay and think phoenix okay phoenix is the <laughs> the spirit animal of this this age right um it embodies this whole dynamic right and so we want to be <laughs> um you know the phoenix part and not the ashes part okay we're part of this <laughs> this new phoenix coming up but it is it is one thing right so within each of us we've got you know aspects of the old that are crumbling that are starting you know disintegrating coming part of the seams and that we've got aspects of the new that are coming together and rising up in 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 strength and that's why it, depending on what part of your journey you're at it may things feel like everything is falling apart so message number one is to embrace it just embrace everything that's happening okay um and these messages may sound contradictory, but they're really not if you breathe into it. Okay. So first of all, to embrace the, the, the chaos, it is what it is and it's happening for a reason. It's happening because it's clearing, you know, all the old, um, the old matrix, the old mindsets, the old energetic patterning is, is being dissolved. Okay. Um, so that's number one the more we can just relax and realize that this is this is happening for a reason it's happening ultimately to support you know life on earth here because these things have to go right and there may be casualties along with it okay and that's part of the whole <laughs> it's part of the whole thing Right, so we need to um, just send blessings all around and just accept that there's going to be stuff that falls apart. And just know that for each and every individual, okay, we're all here as souls at this time right now to assist in this great awakening in whatever way, um, you know, whether you're awoken or not, you know, we're all here as souls right now for this reason and to accept that for every every human experience is part of this whole big unfolding and big picture okay so while we do want to have um you know compassion for everything that's going on around us um it's a very important also that we don't let our sympathy pull us back down into uh, trains of thought and into energetic patterns that are holding us down because when we're holding ourselves down you know or when we're caught up in these patterns right then it's it's really really hard for us to um you know, anchor in that light energy and the ascending energy that we're here to do. Okay, so remember to stay compassionate, but don't allow sympathy to pull you off track, right? It's so easy for empathic to start feeling for, you know, somebody who is probably way maybe caught up in, in all this stuff, right? Um, send them blessings but hold yourself, right? You may need to do some boundary work, right? We all do right now. It's so important for all of us to work with that solar plexus and, and to hold our strong, strong, strong boundaries, right? We're here, at least I am. I hope that you will, you know, join me in this. We're here to uphold a, a higher resonance, okay? And that means that we need to step into and accept and receive the joy and the beauty that is in the world. Because as we start to focus on those things and to focus on this higher potential, that is what we start to create, okay? So right now I'm feeling it's really time and we're still in this year of 2020. It's not too late to take back that 2020 vision take back that 2020 vision right and we can start directing our focus in ways you know in directions that are enhancing of life okay and so this is is really really an exercise in free will okay free will is at the crux of all of this what are you going to focus on 
um, you know, are you going to focus where, where are you going to keep your focus aligned on the descending spiral? Okay, the news, the, uh, the chaos that may be happening and so forth, or without, you know, without being naive, right, we want to be aware of what's going on around us. We can use our peripheral vision to be aware, but where are you going to actually focus on, right? Are you going to focus on this ascending energy? Are you going to focus on, um, you know, the beauty that you know is here for us, right? On the love, on the joy, right? Because there is joy. Even in the darkest night, there are stars, right? And even if there aren't stars, we can imagine the stars, right? Because we know that they are there, even if there's clouds, okay? And so holding that focus is not only going to help us through it, but it's actually helping to rebirth and to uh, shape the new reality that we want to bring in. And remember that every single human being on this planet, whatever they're focusing on, that's where they're, they're um, feeding the energy to. And your focus is either going to be on something that's going to feed the upward spiral or feed the downward spiral. Okay, so this is a call right now to really be aware of what you're focusing on. And so there's a word that has come into my consciousness and I'm being asked to relay, and it's called blessing wish, right? And so what is a blessing wish? And what I'm given to understand is that it's, think of it as an intention, but rather than our, uh, more an intention often is kind of more head oriented, right? Blessing wish comes from the heart. And this is something that there's a, an important distinction there, okay? Because as much of this descending spiral has originated from, you know, wanting to use the head and the mind, right, to fix problems and rather than a heart based approach. Okay, the head is really great at fixing problems. It's really great at, you know, kind of fixing short-term problems, right? But the long-term, the sustainable solutions, <laughs> they're going to be felt more from the heart because ultimately they come from source, right? So to allow the heart to, you know, if we get in the heart, it helps to align our mind to where we can receive from source, okay? So as we start setting our intentions, uh, my encouragement is to, rather than thinking of it as an intention, think of it as a blessing wish, okay? So what's a blessing wish? It's your wish for something better and your blessing for that to, to um, be manifested, okay? So a blessing, what does a blessing do? It calls on the divine to bless. We bless, you know, the divine blesses through us, okay? We set their attention for the blessing, but we're calling for the divine to actually do it, okay? So with this idea of blessing wish, how do we use this? So what is a blessing wish? It's, <laughs> it's like an intention from the heart, but it's for something greater than your own good. Okay, so um, the story that comes to mind, if you're familiar with Buckminster Fuller, and if you're not, look him up because he was an amazing human being. Um, but Buckminster Fuller, at one point when he was a young man, he had failed in business. He had failed in several ways. He was about to actually um, just jump off a bridge, right, and end it all. And, but he didn't. And what he did was he decided instead to devote his life to the betterment of humanity. Okay, and he ended up inventing, he was an incredible inventor, and he ended up just devoting his gifts and talents to the betterment of humanity. And, and he was really, really a visionary. And um, a lot of his ideas are just starting to <laughs> kind of um, be adapted or to show up as like, he, he was really ahead of his time. Um, but he created uh, some amazing things. And, um, and He's, his life was so inspiring, right? Because as soon as he made that little shift, things started happening in his life, right? Um, he started getting opportunities and it was really more about what could he do to serve humanity. Um, and so if we can each create, and that was his blessing wish, you know, uh, the betterment of humanity. Um, 
personally my blessing wish i'm seeing a healed earth okay a healed planet earth you know with everything on it you know and with the earth itself enhancing life and humanity itself aligned with that right um and so that's something that i've taken and i've placed it in my, my third eye okay um and it helps me to align everything that i do if i can align that through that vision of a healed earth it helps me to stay personally in alignment okay and what seems to happen you no know, it's always a journey right i'm not always in alignment but what i've noticed is as I, uh, those times those days those weeks whatever that i'm more in alignment things just are starting to happen in miraculous ways and that can happen for all of us okay um this is the miracle zone and i think the blessing wish is a very very beautiful tool that we can all use to help to stay aligned and to uh, um anchor that vision of a, a beautiful earth in so i'm just um gonna ask you what what is your blessing wish you want to consider spending a little time this week and finding you know what is your blessing wish you want to get into the heart first breathe in and out of the heart and really feel into the heart and you will be given the answer if for you it may be you know it may be the betterment of all humanity it may be a healed earth it might be something else it may be that all children are loved right all children all over the world are loved or all children have enough to eat it may be that there is harmony between all the races of humanity okay there's a, it, it could be um you know that that every woman on the world is loved and cherished and and treated with respect perhaps every man is loved and cherished and treated with respect right it's whatever it is for you um one suggestion is to make it a positive right so for instance that that all all children are loved and healthy instead of to end child trafficking now to end child trafficking trafficking is a great goal but it's again it's focusing on that that negative phenomenon that's happening right and so if we can take our focus completely off the negative again without being unaware of it we want to keep that peripheral vision of awareness but if we can keep our focus on the positive so rather than okay let's end trial child trafficking which again is a great goal but as a blessing wish focus if we can focus on healthy cherished children okay that's focusing on the positive okay so um consider this week of finding your blessing wish because it's a life-changing thing <laughs> life-changing thing to do and it can be life-changing not just for yourself but the whole world as well um okay so uh thank you for joining me uh, just a moment here and i'm going to introduce you to our new critters so this is apollo and he is a bull snake he's a native north american snake non-venomous and um i'm just gonna show you the one we've got uh, a couple more this is the male got a couple of females and uh, we also have uh <laughs> some hognose snakes that we just got in and um my partner actually he used to breed snakes and uh <laughs> my partner actually used to raise snakes and uh looks like we're <laughs> starting on that adventure again and um so i just uh it's very interesting actually to me to uh, to have these animals here in the home because <laughs> because a snake really embodies a lot of these energies that are going on right now in both ways right um they I, I, i've done a snake video so i'm gonna i'm gonna link that but isn't he pretty pretty he's just this beautiful beautiful kind of he's an albino so he's got this very light colored um and so handling a snake is interesting because you know they talk about reptilian energies and they've definitely got that they've got um feeding reflexes some of them can be kind of aggressive um or they can bite out of fear as well and, but they've also got um incredible healing 
capabilities snakes do. So um, they, they heal very, very quickly. And they're just incredibly, <laughs> incredibly fascinating creatures. They really do embody that life force, that Kundalini energy, right in that animal right there. Um, and so what he's kind of reminding is that each of us has within it, you know, the life force. And with the life force, <laughs> you know, each of us has aggression within us and the capability for it. We each have the capability for um, reacting out of fear, right? Or striking, you know, when, when, when our, our needs aren't met, right? Um, we've all got that. And so the call right now is, first of all, when I was talking about acceptance, it's like, you've got to be accepting and aware of this, okay, to handle uh, an animal, any animal, um, you know, but a snake, it means that you always have to be aware of kind of what's going on with it, okay? Um, you, you're not going to, you're not going to domesticate an animal like this, right? It's always got a little bit of wildness in it. So do we, okay? So each of us, and that's true. And when that happens in all of humanity, right? When you, when you take 7 billion of us and compound it, okay? It's just that energy that is reverberating around the world through all of us, right? All together. And so the greatest work we can do right now is to, um, you know, is to learn, uh, or, you know, kind of to control our reactions, right? Um, this, this little buddy <laughs> um, doesn't, he's never going to learn to control his reactions. He's a snake, right? But we can learn to re re control our reactions. We're not going to learn to control necessarily the reactions of the snake within, right? We each have a little snake within us. Um, and that snake is both aligned with the life force energy and it is a potential to create destruction right and so the more we can calm ourselves and to call on the higher power to move through us and actually you know be able to handle the snake within us gently compassionately and yet not allowing it you know, to, to um, get out of hand, right? Um, okay, so um, I also told you I'd, I, I have a, an event coming up and I would be uh, delighted if you join me for that. It's a visionary art workshop and um, what we'll be doing, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do a video on, on that soon, but what we're just gonna get together, I'm gonna do a guided meditation and help to hold the space um, for you to explore through art, um, the inner mind that comes through. And um, I think it's gonna be really fun. It'll be relaxing and it, um, it'll be a way to really start to access some of the, um, the inner guidance in just a, a different way than, than a lot of people do. And even if you are adept at uh, visionary art, uh, please join because it'll be uh, just a different energy pulling into it. And I'm really, really excited. I've got a few people signed up already. Uh, would love to, for you to join. It will be online on Zoom on Thursday, October the 1st at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And it is by donation. So um, if you are free at that time, um, please do join us. <laughs>